Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Uh, tonight we're going to look at how what should we do if a port is already used and it is on Windows. So uh, uh, tonight we're not going to use the WSL. We're actually going to, that, that is the Windows uh, subsystem for, for Linux. We are going to actually create a project and run it on Windows itself. And then we are going to start up, uh, we're going to have two run configurations with the same, exact same port. And then uh, we're going to start up those two Spring applications. And then one of them will, of course, uh, complain that the port is already in use. And then we will solve that problem. Let us get right into it. Before we start, then, thank you very much, Chad, for actually sending me um, the lines uh, how, on how to solve this. Uh, I was, I was uh, just about to create this video, I must say that. But uh, thank you very much, anyway, uh, to send me information on the Discord about the, the talk, topic for Windows. Now, let us get started. I have created this project right here by pressing File, New Projects, Spring Initializer, I chose Gradle. And then I chose instead of choosing the the, the SDKs for my for my WSL for my Windows subsystem for Linux, then I just chose the the Java version, the DDK version that I've installed on my real Windows uh, system instead. This one, then I press the and then I, of course I chose the location which was on my Windows machine instead of choosing WSL. If you go up, uh, usually we actually choose WSL and then we choose Ubuntu something because then we are running inside the window the, the linux subsystem but so today we want to actually to to use the port on the windows system itself so then i just choose the c drive or the d drive and then i choose some path and then next next finish i also added uh, i also added the spring web right here so i could actually so actually i have a port to uh, to use right and to to uh, to bind so then i press next next finish and then i ended up with this project right here i have uh, not added any code at all I've added a uh, run configuration. I actually named this project Windows Project. Um, so that is the name of the project. Then I pressed edit configurations and then I found the, we, we get one for free, we get one uh, just uh, by default when we create a Spring application and we've got this Windows Project application. Then I pressed the, um, the copy configuration uh, or control D and then I got an extra run configuration right here. And what, what does that give me? That gives me the opportunity to press play on the um, on one run configuration. And here we can actually see that the port has been used, but let me jump up in the top corner like this. Here we can see that the port 8080 has now been used by this uh, extra run configuration. So now I'll go to my primary run configuration and then I'll press play there. What actually happens is that it will try to start my spring application and then we'll try to use port 8080 but that is already in use, and look what it writes here. Web server failed to start. Port 8080 was already in use. Please identify the process that uses port 8080. Configure this application to listen to another port. That means solve the problem. And that is what we want to do right now. Um, of course, I know I know which process is actually taking up this port. So I could just go back. So I could just press uh, I could just press this tab right here the extra tab, and then I could press the stop button, and then of course I would have solved the problem. But uh, in this situation, we pretend that we do not know which process it, it was that we need to, to stop. So I will go to, I'll take our partial right here. I'll just clean the screen, and I've actually already prepared some commands. Right here we have net stats, and then minus A and O. And then we are looking, this is the same, if you're used to grab, then uh, you can use, you can do something uh, like, you can use find string, if, if I, in, F I N D S T R, and then you can look for some uh, for some string parts right here. If we don't take P I D, if you just look for eighty eighty, then of course we get uh, we get the line, we get the we, we will find the process. The, the last the last uh, column is the uh, process ID, so we get the process right there. But if you also want if you want the header also, then you write P I D and then space right there, and then you also then you actually get the then you get all of the what do you call it the captions uh, on the table, and then you get. And we have the process ID right here. Just for fun, what will happen if we do not write, write anything, if we just write find A and O, then we get a list of all of these use ports right here. We have some UDP stuff, we have some TDP, and TCP stuff right here. There's a lot of stuff running here. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And then we get the process ID right here. The most important part is actually the process ID because we want to delete and we want to kill that application we are using. So, and we know now, we now we have the ID that is uh, 3620. So let's just copy that, right click in the power shell. And then we go down here and then we say, uh, I have another one prepared right here, task kill, and then slash PID. And then we can just paste the port. 
And now we will get a problem because um, because it actually says right here the process can only be terminated forcefully. That is because it has been yeah. That is just because it's not. Uh, um, this is I, actually I don't know why. Uh, it's probably because we're not the administrator or something like that. So we do not have the right. So we need to write minus force less f for force, and then the process then the process with the PID thirty six twenty has now been terminated. Cool. So let us go back to our uh, IntelliJ, and then we go back to our uh, application that was running. And here we can actually see that the application was stopped. So we can actually see right, see here right now that it actually finished with the exit code one right here. So let us, yeah, so then we can actually start up our application with the primary run configuration. Everything works fine now because port 8080 is no longer bound to any application. Now it is now port 8080 is bound to this uh, spring application right here. That means all communication sent to port 8080 will be forwarded from the the net uh, from the network device to this application right here. That is what uh, that is what uh, the binding actually does. If you want some more information about TCP. Uh, in binding and uh, yeah, and, and what actually happens? Then try to look at the uh, try to look at the other video about TCP uh, binding. That's actually what I wanted to show you. That's actually it. Is there anything else? Yeah, we could actually the net stat. It's, it's very powerful the net stat actually. Let's try to run it without any uh, arguments. Then we just get. Then we need to press Control C to finish. We can also write minus minus help, and then we get some help right here. And then we can say see that the minus A displays all connections and all listening ports. Then we have the minus N that we also uses to displays addresses and port numbers in numerical form. Okay, and then we have the minus O displays the owning process uh, ID associated with each connection. Okay, so let us try to write minus A for all. We will skip the N just for fun and just O. Here we have that, and then if we take no, oh, that was too many. Then we get this list that we got before. So and here we can see the difference actually. If we did not have the n, then we got the names right here instead of the IP addresses. Isn't that right? When we add the minus, yeah, the minus n, then we get the then we get the IP addresses instead. That is pretty awesome. That is pretty awesome. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great evening. Hope to see you again soon. Bye bye.